So I moisten it up well until it becomes pliable. That's mostly on the thick ones. Thin ones not so important. You can feel it's more pliable. Get the excess moisture off and then thread it through under the strings and then back around to where you're sitting. And then you've got to make a little figure of eight knot. Oops. A little sliding knot. So I've made a little, you know, that's like the first half of a reef knot. Okay. And I'm going to pull it up a bit and then take the, the two parts and squeeze them together so you get a little f figure of eight shape. Uh, yeah, I know. And then you get the other end of your piece of gut. It's a bit fiddly, but um, especially when it's gone into a bird's nest. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so you're still holding that. So you come up through that side and then down through the other side. Okay. And then pull the whole thing through. And it always gets stuck around the pegs, very annoying. Right. So then I've switched hands there, so I'm now holding that little figure eight. Take your pliers. It's, I find it hard to do it without pliers. So I'm going to take that piece round and just make the knot straight. And then I'm going to get sh hold of the short end and close the knot up. Like that, with my fingernail. Right, like that. You've got to pull hard on it. So you, you've got to be careful that this doesn't fly out your hand. So make sure that you're going to pull the instrument towards you. Mm -hmm. So if that happens, you stop it falling onto the floor with your body. <laughs> Right, so that's tight. And then you take the long end, this is a slip knot now, and then you pull it up, it just slides up like a little lasso. And make it tight next to the next fret back. So you can then pull it up into position and make it be tight. The hardest one to do is the first one because it's only got that distance to pull up. Mm. These ones, you can do them from you know, the next fret back. And they're easier anyway because they're thinner gut. It's harder with the thicker gut. So then you nip off both ends. Just make sure that's as tight as it can be. That's what I was talking about. Right, so. Insert fire too full. Burning gut stinks, but, so I've left those tails a bit too long there. Just give it two goes. When you burn the end of the gut, it inflates, you know, it gets fatter. So that's what's stopping the knot pulling out. Or take the little charred bits off. Ooh, yeah. It stinks. And then you pull it up into position. So there's the marker. Mm -hmm. You've got them all the way up. That's for equal temperament. So that's how my hands are orientated like that. I'm using your thumbs on the top and then on the back. Top, back and work it up into position and the gut stretches and that knot becomes tight. Put it up to your pencil marks, like this. So I'm keeping my thumbnails on the edges of the hardwood fingerboard, because that's hard. The back of the neck's soft. And that's it. If that knot is in the way of your 
um, top string, then you can just push it round a little bit like that. Because you've wetted the gut, that's made it a bit pliable, you know? Mm -hmm. It makes that job easy. Because when when the frets are old, the gut goes dry. And, you know, so, and then we'll do this one. So take it off. Great. You've got that little, you've got that little gap there, you see, where you've slackened it off. So you can just get the ends of the nippers in there and not have to touch the wood. Yeah. Just nip it off. So you put a 0.9 on the second fret. Yeah, those are nines. This one's going to be an eight. It's not absolute rocket science, you know. Yeah. Um, it's just giving you, because unlike a guitar bridge that where your action is much higher, you're altering the action using the frets because there's not much clearance above them. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can use the same gauge all the way up. You might be able to use eights all the way up, but mm. it just gives you a bit more clearance at this point. Yeah, yeah. Right, so let's put that one away. It's more, it's more um, of an issue on a lute, a regular length lute, because that's got a longer scale length mm. to have the frets uh, gradiated. Um, but you know, set them up however doesn't buzz, basically. Um, right, so now I'm going to use an 8, wherever the 8 was. Where's the 8? There. Yeah. <laughs> These are... Um, I'm using harp strings because they're better quality. If you buy fret gut, it's just inferior quality gut that they can't use for strings. Right, okay. So I use harp strings, which are better. Um, they have less furry bits on them, and they'll last longer. And I, I get this from Bow Brand in Kings Lynn in Norfolk. Oh, nice. It's a local dealer. Um, and you can buy it in long lengths, which um, is pretty expensive, but um, it's more cost-effective than buying short lengths, you know? Mm -hmm. But just for doing frets, you're not going to need much, you know? Right, so here we go again. Point eight. Moisten it up. Just do this as much as you think you need to. It will take a bit of practice, obviously. A bit of gut wetting going on here. This is a local uh, Norfolk tradition, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would kind of make a bit of sense, really, to make a video of this and put it out on the line. That's really. what we're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe someone else has, I don't know. Right, so there we go again, under the strings at the top, back under the neck, and then make your little first half of a reef knot. There's probably a proper name for this, like a, I don't know about knots, but you know, like a half hitch or a bowling or something, I don't know. Anyway, so there's your little figure of eight, and you're holding it again with your finger and thumb to keep that shape, yeah. so you can thread the other end through. When you've got a long length of gut, you know, it's kind of like, Fiddly. Right, so uh, up through the side that's away from you when you're holding it, come up through there first, and then down through the through the loop that's closest to you, like that. And then pull it through. And you have to try and avoid all this carry on. Oh, I've just taken it out. I've pulled it the wrong way. Well, right, that's we'd... a good demonstration on not to do. Yeah, we'll do, is... we'll do that again. Carry on up the gut string. <laughs> <laughs> you have to try and avoid pulling these loops together because then they make a kink in the string. Yeah. Um, and you want to keep kinks out of it, really, so you have a nice, clean... You yeah, know. No playing kinks on the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Waterloo sunset? Nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm just going to move that round to there again and get hold of the short end. Pull the knot up tight with using my thumbnail so it closes up and it becomes neat. And you've got to hold this end tight, otherwise it will 
ping off, you know, mm. like you saw me do a few minutes ago. Pull it up into position. And you want to get you want to get this tight as well. And you want to keep you want to keep the, keep the knot up on the edge of the hardwood because if it's round on the soft neck, when you pull the fret up into position, the knot will dig into the oh, the yeah. neck wood and create a, a groove, mm. which is just irritating. I mean, you can it can be steamed out, but it's just better if you don't make one. On these, then the the fingerboard is relatively thick because it's what how thick I make this. But on your loot, it, it's more difficult unless you've got an ebony veneered neck. Have you got an ebony veneered neck on the back? I don't know. No. Is it black? No, no, no. Right, so again, you want to keep the knot up on the edge of the fingerboard. But on your loot, that's trickier because the fingerboard is much thinner. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Because the knot won't groove the ebony. It's dead hard. Yeah. But this, but the neck wood is soft yeah, by comparison. Right. Yeah. Right, so I'm pulling that right up tight on that corner. I'm going to nip it off again. Burn the ends. Angle the instrument so the flame obviously doesn't affect the wood or the strings. Yes, don't set fire to the And bit. do it in two goes if you want. All right, take off the little charred bits. And you'll see the end of the gut makes a little ball the heat makes it expand and that's what locks the knot <sighs> all right so thumbnails again on the edge of the fingerboard pull it up and at the back pull it up and at the back, up into position. And it should be nice and tight. But still so you can move it. Again, the hardest one is the first one because mm -hmm. you've only got that distance to pull it up, that distance there. Mm -hmm. And if it's not tight, the, the, the top of the fret won't quite sit down on the fingerboard and that can create a buzz where the string hits it, the open string will hit it. Mm. So, um, okay, so that's it. And on, on the back, you know, then if you just want to even them up, if they're uneven, then you can do that. But those ones are fine. So there you go. So there you go. And... So I got me getting now, so I no longer am I gutted. <laughs> oh, <that's it>. Thanks, George. <laughs> that was George Stevens showing how to put gutted frets upon a gitten. <laughs> <laughs>